Welcome back to Gabriel Agar Prod. And this time my patrons voted for something related to dragons. What could it be? And as you have probably guessed by now, we are going to see how to create a dragon breath. So yeah, I think it came out really nice. For this version I actually used two shaders and a few textures. We are going to see a simplified one. But if you want to get access to the original effect, to this project and many many others, you can do it in my Patreon page. It's all available there, links below. So Unity today is sponsoring this video and they got something amazing for your new year's resolution. If you want to become a game designer, you have to check this out. This is an ebook made by Unity on how to create games on how to design them properly. There's so many good information in here that everyone who is creating a game should check this out. I left a link below, it's free. You simply need to fill this out and you will get the ebook and I'm sure you will learn something new. So make sure to check the link below to learn some tips and tricks about game design for free by Unity. Right, so in my scene I have the dragon and the dragon breath. And I got the dragon from the asset store, which is free, by the way. And to create this version, I actually used these two shaders from the Stylized Trails and the Stylized Fire tutorials. That's why it came out like this. You can actually get the same result if you do both of those tutorials and combine it with what you will learn here today. Okay, so let's get started. As a good rule of thumb, let's create an empty game object in our scene and rename it, reset the transform and in this case I'm gonna place it right here in front of my dragon, more or less near the mouth. Then we can go ahead and in a folder with we'll right click we can create a new visual effect graph. You can rename it and then parent this to the empty we created. Make sure to reset the transform just. And if we press in the edit button we can open visual effect graph. I'm gonna duck it more or less around here and well the idea now is that we shoot one particle and it leaves a trail behind. So let's do exactly that. Since we only need one particle, we can replace this constant spawn rate with a single burst of one particle. And as you can see it's going everywhere. We need velocity but not here in the initialized particle. So let's remove it and for the set lifetime we can turn off the randomness and say it's two seconds and a half. For the motion we can use the update particle because we want this to slow down towards the end. If I set the Z to 1, it keeps on going on forever until the end of its lifetime. And we don't want that, we want to control it with a sample curve. And it's useful to create an animation curve property to control it in the inspector. We can rename it to fire trail motion for example. And this curve is extremely important to get the right feeling of this dragon breath. For now I'm gonna push the last key to more or less 0.3 and 0.13 for the value and we are going to fix it in a moment and improve it. For now let's connect it right here and for the time, well we can use the age of the particle which goes from 0 to 2.5 but this block translates it to be between 0 and 1. And to have a better control of this motion, we can use a float and multiply it with a sample curve. Let's create a fire trail speed. We can say it's 13 for now. Multiply this and connect it to the Z value of the set velocity. And what will happen is that towards the end, as you can see, it's slowing down the particle. And that is great. We are going to adjust the curve a little bit later. For now, we want to emit a trail. And in order for that to happen, we need to trigger an event, in this case, rate, based on rate, over time, continuously. We could push a line from here and construct the whole particle system, but there's a simpler way. If we press spacebar and search for trail, you will find the simple adds and trails particle system, which is a very good start. We actually don't need this left side, so let's remove it. Let's move this a little bit closer. And let's create a connection from the trigger event to the GPU event up here. And as soon as we do it, we get one trail, in fact. That's going to be our fire breath, <laughs> where we are going to apply our shade. Let's just adjust a few things, for example, the lifetime can be 1.5 and we don't need turbulence. In the update particle strip, down here, let's use the set size 
with a value of 1.5, 1.6 for now we will see and for the set size over life we want this curve from big to small. Oh, and we need to set it to multiply in the composition, by the way. Otherwise it will overwrite the previous set size block. Cool. If you look closely it isn't smooth, but it's very simple to fix it. We simply need to increase this rate in the trigger event to 30 for example and now we will have a smoother trail. Cool, right? And that's it for the first part in Visual Effect Graph. Now comes the part where we need to create a shader for this, something that looks like a fire trail. So with right click in a folder, let's go ahead and create a blank shader graph. I'm gonna rename it to Dragon Breath Shader and double click to open it up. In here, make sure you have the Graph Inspector window because for the active targets, we are going to add Visual Effect only. And that's it. Now we can start by adding two color properties so we can create a gradient and then a texture 2D for the main text. For the first color, we can say it's in HDR mode. You can actually already select a yellow color and increase the alpha. And for the color 02, you could actually already select a reddish color. Just make sure you increase the alpha to 100 and set the mode to HDR. Now the way this works is with a lerp node. You can press spacebar and search for one, connect the, connect the first color to the A option and the second color to the B option. Yeah, in my case I'm going to select now orange for the first color and then something more along red for the second color. But we need something to influence the T input of the lerp. And in this case we can use a UV node. If we split this we get access to the RGBA and R and G are a gradient. You can use a preview for the R and as you can see it goes from black to white and B goes... So if we connect the R channel to our T we get a gradient that goes from yellow to orange in this case which is super useful. Now we can pick this up and multiply it with our main texture which means basically any texture that we assign here will have this gradient. For now I'm going to select a trail that I already have made but I'm gonna show you in a moment how to create one as well. You can select the default part on your case. So yeah, looking good. Now let's take this moment to animate this trail, to scroll it. The way we do it is by using a tiling and offset node. The offset part will scroll it. You can connect it to the UV of the sample texture and now we can go ahead and create two vector tools, one for the main text tiling and the other for the main text speed. The tiling must be 1-1 one, one. and connect to the tiling input and for the speed, as you can see the offset scrolls this, but we need the time variable. If we multiply this with our vector to main text speed, like this and then connect to the offset, now we are able indeed to scroll this, for example, minus 0 0.5 in X, as you can see, and that's going to be super useful. Let's connect this last multiply node to the base color and save this shader and then go back to VFX Graph so we can see how this works with our trail. We don't need this output particle quad down here, delete it and then we can assign to our output particle strip the shader we created. If you don't see this shader graph option make sure you go to preference and in visual effects you turn on experimental operators. Alright so yeah this is what we have, very simple, very basic for now. I'm gonna adjust the first color and increase the intensity, you can copy these values if you want and for the second color I'm also going to use red but increase the intensity, ok, something like this. And now it's a good time to adjust the animation curve, the fire trail motion curve. So let's open it up and the idea is that the first key goes to 1 and the last key should be around 0 0.36 for the time and 0 0.16 for the value and then adjust the handles like this. This is a good motion, you can try other motions of course. And it will look better if we set the blend mode to alpha. Yeah, we get all of this black around our particle because we haven't fixed the alpha, we'll fix it in a moment. For now, let's quickly create a stylizer trail for this. So I'm going to use Krita and I'm going to create a new file with 2048 by 2048 pixels. Make sure the background is black and that we have an empty layer. And if you press Shift double V, you enter in wrap mode. Basically you can create seamless textures with this, which is awesome. So with the brush tool I'm gonna go ahead and select this one and with a brush of more or less 800 pixels I'm gonna create something like this. 
in one go. Then we can select this brush right here, press this little icon so we can edit this brush and decrease the fade to zero. Then we can press E to select the eraser and with an opacity of around 30%, 40%. With one go, you can remove a little bit from here, then from here. And then decrease the brush size. You can hold shift to decrease the brush size, by the way. Remove from here and then from up here. You can add a little touch now, make some holes in this and that's it. Now press shift W again to get out of the wrap mode. And then you can save this export as a PNG to your Unity project. In the main text that we can assign the trail we created. And here we go. If we set the main text speed, we get a really cool effect. Set it to minus, set it to minus 1.5, for example. Yeah, it looks very nice. Let's do a few more things. You can also adjust the main text styling. By the way, I'm gonna leave it at one for now. Okay, so let's get rid of that black. It's very simple. This last node we can connect to the alpha in this case and press save asset and here we go. We no longer have the black background, but let's do something more. Let's make sure that we can dissolve this. And if we multiply the main texture with the Voronoi node, we can do it. First, let's connect the Voronoi to a power node. As you can see, it dissolves the Voronoi, which is useful. By the way, let's create a float for the dissolve scale. With a default value of 3 for now. And we also need this to move, so once again, a tiling and offset node is required. And a time node as well, multiplied with a vector 2, which is for the dissolved speed in this case. So down here, if we connect the power to the multiply, as you can see now, it dissolves our text. Finally, let's just create a dissolve float with a default value of 2. And it will look better if we dissolve only the end of our text. So, once again, with the UV node, we can extract the gradient from the R channel and multiply it with the power node. But in this case, we want the opposite of the gradient, so let's use a 1 minus node. Connect up here to the multiply, and then you can save this in the save asset button and that's it we have now a beautiful fire breath let's make a few adjustments to our vfx graph and add some flames as well as you can see this is leaving it on forever it should stop once it gets thinner we simply need to stop the trigger event on rate to fire up and the way we do it is by comparing the values that come out of this sample curve we can say that if the sample curve is greater or equal to the lowest value of the curve, which is this last key down here. For example, in my case, 0 0.164, that's what I'm going to use down here, 0 0.165, for example. So then we can use a branch and say that, well, if it's true, if it's greater or equal in this value, then keep on firing the trigger event on right. But if it's lower, then it's going to be false, it's going to be zero, and it's not going to spawn the trigger event on right, right? All right, so let's make some adjustments to our shader, to our fire breath. Let's increase the tiling to 1.5 and the main text speed, something like minus four. So it goes really fast, much more aggressive for a dragon, right? You can also say the dissolve scale is five and set the default speed to minus two, for example, and dissolve power to 2.5. I'm just gonna go ahead and for the color zero two, I'm gonna increase the intensity to almost 10 and set the U to seven. And now we have a very beautiful color going on. Fantastic. With what we have, we can also create some quick flames. For example, we can copy this part right here. Control C, Control V. And instead of a single burst, we want a constant spawn rate of something like 32 particles. Oh, and let's create an output particle quad down here so we can see something, right? As you can see, it keeps on spawning particles. We can fix it by selecting the spawn up here. We can say the loop duration is constant as well as the loop count. And for the loop duration, we can say it's 1.7. Let's increase the capacity to 250, for example. The lifetime, you can make it random between one and 1.5 seconds. Let's add randomness to the rotation. Random, yes. Between 360 and minus 360 in the Z. 
We don't need this trigger event, let's remove these nodes and the trigger event as well. What we need is down here, we can play with this now and say we want this to be our end towards the camera, so it faces the camera. We want to control the size, random, yes, between 1.5 and 3.5. These default particles are huge, we are going to fix it. Now let's add a set size of our life. And for the curve, we want this to go from small to big, but we want to push the first key up below 0 0.5. So we need to set this to multiply, otherwise it will overwrite any previous value. All right, looking good, look at this. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Let's assign our shader that we created and let's change the main texture to the default part that comes with Unity. It would be better if you could create a flame texture like the one I have here, something nicer. Check out my channel for more, by the way. And now we need to control the color of this. We are going to use a gradient, a simple gradient. The time requires the age of the particle, age of our life. For the gradient, we can say that the first key is almost red, you can copy my values by the way, increase the intensity to, to 8, 9, something crazy. Push this key around here and for the color, I'm gonna select a orange, something like this, but density is lower like 2. Then connect this to color 01 and color 02 and here we go. Really, if you can create a texture for this, go ahead. Oh, and by the way, let's delete this fire trail speed and set it to 20 so it goes faster. Okay, let's play with this solve. This is very kind of opaque. A simple curve will do because it will allow us to animate it. Once again, age over lifetime to control the time of the simple curve. The first key, right click, edit, and we can say it's around 6.5. Second key, around 4 for the value. And for the last key, something like 11 should be fine to dissolve. And for the last key, something like 12 should be fine to dissolve everything. You can press A to see the whole curve. And we want to fix these Bezier curves like this, and we are good to go. Connect to dissolve power, by the way. And yeah, it dissolves towards the end, which is nice, that's what we need. Now let's feed random values to the dissolve scale. We can use a random number for that between 2 and 7. That's very nice for what we have here with one shader and one texture. Right, let's add some fire near the mouth of our dragon. We can copy this. Ctrl C, Ctrl V. Up here, loop duration 1.5. 16 for the constant spawn rate instead, and a shorter lifetime between 0 0.5 and 1. We don't need set velocity, it's going to be static near the mouth. What we need is to actually offset it. We can use set position and set it to 0 0.5 in the Z. Nice. We can increase down here the dissolve scale to something like 3 and 9. And the size could be 1 and 3. And here we go. We have fire near the mouth, with one shader and one particle. I obviously used two shaders for this and different textures as well, which I highly recommend you to check out my channel to learn more about this, but that's what I can show you today with the time we have. This project is available on my Patreon page, if you want to learn more about it, it's there, you support the channel and you get access to a bunch of effects that you can use for your games, which is awesome. To my patrons, I want to say a big thank you to each one of you and as usual, a quick shout out to the top tier patrons, which are awesome. And they are Alak Frost, Krupy Dooby Doo, Derek Benson, Donald Thompson, Edward Chai, Eric Hudson, Goblin Plague, Guy Rapapor, Leonardo Ferraz, Little Tsai, Lobster Posey, Maxim, Mograph Tech, Nat Sims, Oitsk, Radioactive Bullfrog, Revenant Games, Stefan Zarkov, Try It Out, Verisuta, William Morris, Sonan Chin, and Ingo Das. Your support is super much appreciated, guys, and it keeps me going. To everyone who watched this, I hope you have enjoyed this video, and I really hope to see you in the next one. Please like and subscribe so you don't miss anything. And that's it, guys. I hope you have learned something new. So thanks and bye.